Hi, good morning. My name is Risa Rodriguez, and today we'll be representing the negative. How are you guys? Nice. <laughs> Hello, I'm Roxana, and I'm very happy to meet you. We followed your elections closely, very closely, and I'm happy to have to uh, to have this opportunity to talk to you. Sorry. Uh, we appreciate it. It's a great opportunity for us to uh, be able to talk to you guys. It's uh, very. Um, I mean, thank you. It's a huge opportunity. We get to talk to someone halfway across the world. <laughs> okay, so shall we begin? Are you recording once right yes. now? Yes, we are. And uh, tell them we have the, they can record themselves. Oh, the, you guys can record too if you'd like, <laughs> but we have the recording also. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can we start? Shall yeah. we start right now? Yeah, you guys are affirmative. You guys go first. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the, ine the inequality of, of wealth is detrimental for to democracy. Okay, so uh, we shall start uh, with give giving some information about what democracy is. Democracy means that the minority and majority of people can uh, participate in um, political decisions. And uh, when we have inequality as um, discrimination, people will have a less, uh, less, uh, um, less opportunity to participate in political... Sorry, just a minute. Okay. Well, democracy is a type of so uh, sovereignty, and some of its important properties include the principle of minority and majority and the recognition of freedom of, and people's equal rights. If we, don't have equal in, uh, if we don't have equality in a society, such as discrimination, people won't have this possibility to um, participate in political uh, stuff like elections, and uh, they won't have this in power like the rich people have more, um, more decision powers in, in um, comparing to those who don't have enough money or enough um, income. <clears throat> and, yes. Okay, so we have two definitions. First of all, uh, we have justice and we have equality. Justice means that everyone is in the is in the right place, but equality means that people should be should have the same things uh, without considering their abilities and uh, what they can do actually. And we don't want that. We want that people ha have this uh, the thing that they deserve. So and. Uh, we have two, uh, two other definitions. One is difference and the other is discrimination. Difference in a society is good, but discrimination is not because discrimination is a threat to, uh, to, uh, to democracy. And, um, <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki. Hi, nice to meet you. I've listened to this uh, video conference. Oh, can you hear me right now? Yes, I hear you fine, yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, in some countries, uh, delegates are chosen by people to represent people's opinion and request this to the government. But uh, when, uh, but the del uh, some in some countries, the delegates' goals are uh, only to be uh, re-elected. Re so they only support big companies and uh, maybe brands or celebrities or something like that. Uh, that uh, may, mm, it's not, uh, okay for democracy because they uh, when for example when you choose a higher brand for uh, 
um, supporting your uh, political campaign, uh, only the, <laughs> the fans of that brand or that person will, uh, will vote for that person. So uh, it's not good for results of that election or something like that. And that gives um, that gives uh, more extra power, uh, power to that politician that using this system for be reelected. And another problem to inequality is that inequality causes populism, which means people decide to vote for someone without even thinking of, um, of the consequences, and they are deceived easily because of the difference of incomes and difference of money and the, and the goods that they have. And that's a threat to democracy, and that's the death of democracy, somehow. Um, we have explained everything. If you have questions, please ask. <coughs> uh, I think, no, I think we're, we're okay. Uh, just to make sure, uh, what's your definition on equality again? Sorry, can you repeat, please? Uh, can, uh, can you repeat your definition for equality? Okay. Uh, okay. We, by equality, we mean that, that people should have the same, some same basics, like um, some essential needs that they should be, uh, uh, they should be available to all people of society, such as the um, the opportunity to study, like for example, education, health. Such as a minimum wealth for social welfare. Okay. Thank you. I will go on now to my negative speech. <laughs> now, in today's uh, debate, we are result and we say that income disparities are not detrimental to democratic ideals. We begin with definitions. We're going to use the term detrimental to mean a real threat to democracy. We'd like to offer Rand Corporation's definition of threaten as it pertains to risk assessment and cross apply it here in today's debate. Under this framework, threat is composed of two key components, intent and capability. Something cannot be considered a threat unless it has both the capability and intent to inflict harm. Now, democratic ideals can refer to a number of different things. Because this debate is about democracy, we believe it should refer to the ideals outlined in our nation's founding document as, de as democracy. Now, we believe that those generally accepted and practiced in our country. Now, we've realized that no form of democracy is in existence today, and our current government is based upon democratic ideals. This includes everything from the ideals of life, liberty and property, individual rights, as well as access to quality education, equality of opportunity, and one person vote, and justice participation. Now, the affirmative response for, uh, there's, the affirmative was responsible for identifying specific ideals in today's debate. This leads us to the standard. This round will ultimately come down to the affirmative's burden of proof, specifically as it pertains to our definition of threaten. Our opponents cannot win this debate unless they identify several key democratic ideals and then prove through a direct casual relationship how income disparity has both the intent and capability of threatening those ideals. You cannot win and be just by saying that income disparity is bad. We have always had and we will always have income disparity no matter what income distribution model we use. To my first contention, capitalism is necessary for democracy. Our first main argument is that capitalism is necessary for democracy. In the actuality, this isn't even an argument. It's an irrefutable fact. Never in the history of human civilization has there ever existed a truly successful and long-lasting democracy that operated under an economic system other than capitalism. Dr. 
Manuel Cerijo, professor emeritus of the University of Miami, explained this by citing the work of two of history's great economists, Max Weber and Joseph Schumpeter, who came to conclusions such as democracy in its clearest form can occur only under capitalism and industrialization, and that it had its greatest opportunity in a society which emphasizes individual responsibility. Modern democracy is a product of the capitalist process, and the two were mutually supportive parts of a rising modern civilization. Now, Dr. Manuel argues himself that capitalism is the only system in which freedom and liberty can exist. The fact that an individual cannot start his own company is a violation of his freedom. In a free society, all men may act as they choose so, as long as they do not infringe on the freedom of others. The impact of this is clear. Without capitalism, and as a result, income disparity, democratic ideals could not exist. Instead, we could have socialism, a system in which democratic ideals, such as freedom and liberty, as well as individual and property rights, are recognized and protected, which can fit in under your definition of equality. So, looking back to your, <coughs> sorry, looking back to your previous arguments, I would say that your definition of equality can fall under socialism and not democracy. Our contention number two for me is current income disparity has not threatened democratic ideals. Our second and final main argument is quite simply this. Current income disparity has not threatened democratic ideals. We will prove this by using our remaining time to list several key democratic ideals and explain why each of them are very much alive and well in America today. First, while income disparity does not exist in our country, it is recovering from one of the worst economic recessions in history. The standard of living of US citizens is still very high. In fact, according to the UN Human Development Index, the United States currently ranks the fourth of the countries in the world. We must understand that income disparity does not equally abject poverty. The average person in the U.S. is very well off, able to afford housing, a car, and luxuries such as television, computers, cell phones, etc. From this, we have to deduce that the ideal of equality and opportunity is very much alive and well. Second, another key democratic ideal is access to quality education. It is very much intact. Our government spends billions in tax dollars every year to provide kindergarten to uh, 12th grade school education in our nation's children, as well as additional billions subsiding higher learning. According to the College Board, young adults in this country can purchase an entire year worth of education at community college for just over $2,000. The government also subsides world-class learning institutions, such as the University of California system, its campuses like UC Berkeley and UCLA which are competitive to private and Ivy League universities. Again, this is not only to show that access to quality education is available, but also further substantiates the fact that equality of opportunity exists for those willing to simply open a book and educate themselves. Third, the idea of equal representation and one person, one vote is intact. Again, going back to your previous argument about how the wealthy have more power, here in America, we all know that one person means one vote. Judged despite the fact that there is more likely substantial income disparity between someone and Bill Gates, the both still have one vote in the presidential election. Fourth and finally, a number of government programs, interest groups, and organizations exist to protect virtually all of our democratic ideals. Programs such as low-income housing, unemployment benefits, food stamps, etc. They all protect equality of opportunity and they meet your definition of um, uh, your definition for <coughs> Um, uh, equality in which how people are supposed to be granted certain needs. So that stating, we have proven and we hope that the only vote that there is in this round today is negative. Democratic uh, uh, wealth inequality is not detrimental to democratic ideals. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I will be happy to answer. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not
سای دو اصلا کسی که دیدی در های سکول توی آمریکا خیلی بیشتر از کشوری مثل ژاپن و کانادا خب اول چون کشورم دموکراسی بیشتر در خیلی I wanted to say that um, you said that um, American people have some good position in the world among others uh, and so I want to say that over uh, 500,000 homeless people in the U.S. and the suicide rates and people who drop out of high school every year are um, increasing um, <coughs> in the U.S. Friday, and uh, it's much higher in U.S. than Japan or Canada, which are also democratic countries, but they have a lower wealth inequality, and the minimum for their social we uh, welfare is much higher than the U.S. So that doesn't show you that the wealth inequality should maybe be less, or there should be more social welfare. Uh, no, I mean, considering that my uh, resource of the information was from the UN Human Development Index, it's a pretty reliable source. Not only that, but also just because um, it may seem lower uh, and we have uh, maybe higher dropout rates, it still doesn't mean that uh, American people aren't able to get, a, I guess, a, a average job and still have enough money to get luxuries. As I mentioned before, cell phone, computers, that's something that has become a common thing. And it is a need of luxury and many people can still afford it. Does that answer your question? <coughs> Um, I want to say maybe, uh, I want to say that actually people in other democratic countries are much happier because they have a um, higher uh, li um, hope for living or like they have lower rates for suicide. So that shows that um, their way of wealth inequality, which is uh, less than the U.S., is more effective and more efficient. I understand. So, I understand that, however, I don't see how happiness has to do with the fact that wealth is detrimental to the democratic ideals. Um, I can see the correlation which uh, um, people may be having uh, higher hopes, as you said, in living. Um, but, I mean, everyone is different. Uh, it can't be applicable to everyone. We can't follow a standard for everyone. Uh, we all have different systems. And like I said before, there hasn't been, um, again, going back to the topic that we are arguing today, um, there hasn't been a lasting uh, democracy that hasn't had uh, capitalism in it. And capitalism has to have wealth and equality in order to, for it to be successful. Yeah, I'm telling, uh, no, I'm saying that inequal, um, inequality in wealth is good. And of course, we need it to continue. And um, yes, it's effective. But I'm saying that if it were less, like Japan, um, there would be better... Um, like living um, people and that's like what you said because you said like American people are very happy and wealthy and they are able to uh, like have the necessary needs in life but so I'm like telling you that there are other countries that are also democratic but they have a um, better like uh, life expectancy and uh, they also have uh, the ability to buy I understand that, but in, in today's debate, arguing, I'm just uh, arguing the topic, and I think you just contradicted yourself by saying that democratic, uh, that wealth inequality is good for democratic ideals. Uh, yeah. Prove my point. Um, however, I, I, I just um, I hope uh, that I made my point clear in saying that uh, wealth inequality is good, and <clears throat> when it comes to uh, Addressing the question, I feel like I did address the question as both definitions uh, that you provided were met under the contentions that I provided. Oh, so can you just define me uh, what you understand from democracy again? Well, the, the thing with democracy is the fact that uh, for every democracy, and answering the issue that we are arguing today, democracy has to have both inequality it has been proven in uh, past societies and in the past that um in order to have a successful uh society there has to be capitalism and capitalism is based off uh economic uh inequality 
<laughs> the more the more um, the more that there's a higher class the more people want to reach that higher class which drives competition and if we are driven by competition then indeed we are improving ourselves uh, we can see that if we go back to uh, the first democracy when it was established <clears throat> the first democracy was established around 5th century BCE in Athens Greece and uh, we see to prove our resolution if we go as far as that that in ancient Greece, it was highly stratified and it's far, far less equal than the United States democracy we have today. Um, even ancient Greece um, uh, said that it was only the wealthy and educated free males, uh, aka citizens, that were allowed to vote. <coughs> Women and slaves did not have rights to vote. So if we go back to what democracy is, we can see that the true democratic ideals prove that indeed inequality between its citizens is what drives to a successful society. Yeah, so um, I have another definition of, uh, that um, it has uh, like four parts, four main parts, and one of it uh, is that the active participation of the people as citizens in politics and civic life. So I believe that if uh, there is, um, I, you know, I agree with inequality in wealth, but I think that um, there should be like um, a line for it that if we cross it and there will be like um, uh, so many rich people and so many poor, poor people. So uh, there will be problems that will, they wouldn't have the equal right in participating and uh, well, participating in uh, political matters or like um, they won't even believe in the system anymore because they say that's not working for us. and. I'm talking about like very poor, uh, poor people. I'm agreeing with inequality in wealth, but I'm talking about when it's when it crosses the line, and so that would be an issue. Um, I wouldn't like. I understand what you're trying to say. However, um, when it comes down to democracy, and like for example, as you said, voting, we all have the same effect. It's one person, one vote. So. Uh, like I mentioned in one of my contentions, Bill Gates, the richest man in the world, could uh, vote, and a citizen, uh, maybe a college graduate, could still have the same effect on the election as Bill Gates. One vote, one person. Yes, but the rich people have, uh, the very rich people have the ability to buy, like, um, news channels or newspapers, and they would um, tell people, um, tell people, <laughs> But Some people other uh, like they would say that this candidate is the best choice and they can like play with other people's minds so the money gives them the power that like in, uh, on paper yes there's equality in the vote you give or anyone gives a poor person to a rich person but um like in reality rich people can have a, a effects and minds of other people so that will make an equality and like how you said it was the mind of other people in the end we end up making our own decisions i mean for example it's it's a great equalizer in the end as many people may try to persuade to vote for some person in the end you're going to make your own decision and you're going to choose who you think is better to vote for uh we can see this clearly from our election uh hillary clinton was endorsed by a lot of celebrities a lot of people that a lot of young voters and a lot of people that are involved in the pop culture would uh, feel compelled to voting like for in their favor. And we, we saw the outcome of it. I mean, Trump still won because uh, people deemed that he was a better choice. So again, even if we have um, rich people trying to influence our decisions, it's gonna come down to our choice in the end. Not everyone thinks the same. So again, we can't have that uh, kind of, I would say, uh, standard as to how uh, things should be, uh, I guess, handled. Um, because we, we can see that even though we have had rich influences, it doesn't mean anything. It's still one person, one vote. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe even uh, Trump, like uh, other newspapers persuaded. <laughs> And, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I understand your uh, point. I, I guess Trump did have a lot of support, but it was if we looked at I, I was I was I was following the election last night, and a lot of the major 
votes that ended up uh, winning the states were coming from suburban areas. Uh, so not necessarily can we always rely on the rich and the powerful. As again, I mentioned again that Hillary was endorsed by a lot of celebrities and it didn't make much of a difference. Uh, there's, uh, there's rich people in our political system and that's the way it has been. If we go back again to fifth century uh, in Athens, only the free educated males were allowed to vote. They were considered citizens. Yeah, I understand what you say. And like maybe if uh, the media didn't support Miss uh, Mrs. Clinton as much as it did, maybe she wouldn't come even this far. So um, as my research showed in uh, several websites, uh, the uh, the media has great impact on what people uh, believe and think and uh, at the end vote. Uh, maybe they will not understand it. Some people do, some people don't. But at the end, um, you cannot like run away from uh, uh, what you see every day. So yeah. Okay. <coughs> huh? Uh, I have a rebuttal. Uh, do they go or do I go? Yeah, have them do their rebuttal. <laughs> so I think you guys are on to your next speech. Uh, it's your turn to do the, the rebuttal, and then I will close with my rebuttal. Yeah. No, I wanted to say when. Oh, sorry. <coughs> He's taking a picture. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Um, so, uh, when people, um, when someone is wealthy, uh, they may appeal to people who um, are wishing for, like, the poor people, one of their top pri priorities is to um, gain some money, um, maybe some of, um, so, through democracy, um, they might, their best choice is to, do you, do you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, yeah. So uh, their best choice is to choose someone that they think may bring the most, uh, make the country most uh, wealthier. So um, the thing is that uh, money is a great appeal for people who need the need it. So um, it's a kind of propaganda when you um, um, when someone is wealthy um, and runs for the presidential debates. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, would you like to add a rebuttal or is that your closing? Uh, no, uh, like uh, you said that um, everyone have the, has the right to vote. So yes, they do. But sometimes um, um, Money is like a factor that influences people on their vote. Uh, maybe at that time of their life, um, what they think is best for them is um, uh, is a wealthier country, but there may be more important things that they're not considering at the moment because of their need for the money. Well, I guess I'd like to point out that there is rich people in all governments all over the world. Uh, you mentioned Japan, you mentioned Canada. We have wealthy people in power. That's just a refutable fact. It's just the way it is. Um, so I would say that when you, when arguing rich influence, uh, I mean, we, we elect people that are part of the higher class. It has and always has been that way. Again, going back to the, um, establishment of democracy in 5th century BC, Athens, Greece, the only people that could vote and be elected with, were free male citizens, and, and ever since, that's the way it has been. So wealth inequality, and, and answering the issue that we are arguing today, um, wealth inequality is not detrimental to democratic ideals, I would say. Uh, so do you agree that dem democratic uh, democracy isn't about just voting? It has other things in it? Yes, and I mentioned them in my contentions. Mm. So, so, uh, if, um, so you just said that um, wealthy people, rich, pe rich people have, have 
more chance of um, um, participating in the government and being chosen. Yes. Um, isn't that a, a violation of democrat democracy? No, so again, how I stated, if we go back to the first establishment of democracy, the original democracy, where we get our democratic ideals, it was wealthy people that were elected. It was the educated higher middle class in Athens, Greece, that were the ones that were elected. Now, again, we see people in other democracies, as you mentioned, Canada, Japan, that are wealthy and they are part of the upper class, and we don't see their democracy falling apart. Um, but don't you think as time goes by, the ideas change? We can operate on the ideas that were made uh, years ago. Ideas need to change by time, just as people and culture and countries do. Well, going back to the statistic you presented before, you mentioned that democracy in Japan and in Canada has a lot of uh, happy people and they're happy with their democracy so i would say no if, if people i mean people like democracy and we don't see the countries falling apart uh government wise which uh, comes to the point that wealth inequality indeed is not detrimental to democratic ideals instead it leads and drives to competition and competition drives to more success um so you believe that the idea of democracy democracy hasn't changed throughout the years and it shouldn't have it has changed because times change. However, when it comes down to the original democratic ideals, they all remain the same. We all believe that capitalism is what drives democracy, and democracy cannot be without capitalism. And capitalism is the is uh, the base of capitalism is wealth in body. Um, I just want to make sure. So, do you believe that capitalism <coughs> is the way to achieve democracy? I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question? Um, yeah, uh, I mean, um, do you believe that capitalism is the only way to achieve democracy? I don't believe it. It's an irrefutable fact. It has been in the past and it still is. Mm -hmm. That is the basis of democracy. I'll, uh, I'll go on to my third speech and final speech, my final rebuttal. Now, going back once again to the development of democracy around the 5th century BCE in Athens, Greece, we can see improve our resolution and go as far as to say that income disparities are not detrimental to our democratic ideals, but indeed a democratic ideal. Direct democracy in Athens was available to only male citizens. Citizenship was only available to free adult males. It wasn't until Solon that a compromise between classes was reached, and we all know how Greece ended afterwards. But the origin of democracy centralizes power in the upper and educated class. Now, ancient Greece was highly stratified and far, far less equal than the United States today. Even in 1776, the birth of American democracy, there was slavery and wealth inequality was higher than it is now, particularly considering that essentially you were either a poor farmer or a rich banker. Now, if democracies can be treated and can be created in such situations, surely it won't be threatened by a more equal wealth distribution today. If we look at our... Um, standards today following my two contentions i mentioned how everyone is able to have an average job and afford uh, luxuries now uh, uh, think of what unique harm does modern wealth inequality pose none at all moreover while the average person 200 years ago lived in great poverty today even americans making thirty thousand dollars a year are in the top one percent worldwide the level throughout um the level of wealth prosperity and well-being that even the worst off in America have, is unprecedented throughout history. The income for the lower and middle classes aren't rising as quickly, but they are still rising. Just because they're not rising as quickly as we want does not mean that the, um, the percentage of rise isn't there. Um, and it should be an issue. Why should it be an issue if some people are getting richer faster than others so long as everyone is getting rich? Again, that is capitalism. And as I mentioned before throughout my first speech, Capitalism is indeed what drives competition, and competition leads to success. Now, yet also I'd like to know that there is some difference, corporations being in one. There is a huge, um, I would say, focus on, I guess, the way that our election works. Again, democracy has one vote, one person. So the rich men in the world could vote and have the same effect on the election as somebody else, because in the end, we end up choosing and making our own decisions. That being said, I'd like to say that <coughs> the uh, affirmative did agree with me.
said that yes, inequality is bad. So therefore, when it comes to answering the issue at question today, both inequality is not detrimental to democratic ideals. Thank you. So, okay, uh, I had I had something to say, and that's the fact that uh, people don't have equal rights to vote. For example, in different states in America, people have different um, power of vote. Like if you live in a in a state that has more uh, more popularity, you have the that that state has more power in the elections. You regard, uh, comparing to other states with lower population, and that's not right. <coughs> Uh, huge amounts of um, okay. So, and democracy needs to be in. And I, I mean by that, the electoral votes that you have, the electoral system that you have in America, that uh, rich, that richer and more populated states have more voting power. Um, I understand that, but answering the question we were arguing today, going back to what was the post of the argument today, was whether or not wealth inequality is detrimental to democratic ideals. And again, uh, our, our republic, because we, we don't live in a democracy, we live in a type of democracy, which is a republic. Our republic is a democratic ideal. It, it comes, it's an ideal that comes from democracy. So again, wealth inequality is not detrimental to democratic ideals. Answering the issue by question today. But democracy does not necessarily mean to have the power to vote. Democracy is not all about voting. Democracy, democracy I, agree. Means I, I agree that democracy is not, uh, it does not mean that there's power, that everyone has the same power to vote. However, when it comes to the democratic ideal we are arguing, it does meet the requirements of those ideals. Democracy in Athens, when it was first established, and it, the vote so only talked to free male citizens. They were the ones that were considered voters. So I, I totally agree with your point, but I don't believe it's answering the question. And the question was whether or not wealth inequality is detrimental to democratic ideals. The answer to that question is no. Uh, when you guys shocked over our, our election as much as we were um, uh, over our elected president? <laughs> We're talking about democracy, not elections. Uh, I don't know, it was just an off topic because you know you guys are bringing a lot of the uh, voting uh, and election points up. Just like, oh, you guys have any questions? We're happy to answer them. <laughs> I mean, in general, we're not really talking about democracy either. We're just uh, basing it off the democratic ideals, you know? Because we're not a democracy, we're a republic, we're a type of democracy, but not a, not a direct democracy. Democracy is uh, taking uh, power to the... Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, one of the main parts of democracy is about the right to have private property. This is not inequality. This is the right to have private property. You are allowed to have private property. You gain your money and you buy private. You buy property with it. We're not. That is not our definition. We're not saying inequality like that. We're saying like one the the difference between a rich person and a poor person within a country shouldn't be so much like the, the, like the poorest person in a country and the richest person shouldn't have a lot of difference. Like they should be close. They should have the same, like, you know, like they should be in the same, uh, well, be in the same classes. The definition be, you provided for equality was that people should be granted certain needs equally. And that, that's, mm -hmm. I guess that's a good definition. However, that definition fails under socialism. And I, I, I uh, address socialism in my second contention. Um, and socialism, again, is not democracy. Uh, and even if we are arguing democracy or not, we're not arguing democracy, we're arguing the democratic ideals. Because democracy, it's not something we would really want. Um, democracy, for example, in 
like if we look to the original democracy as to what is democracy in Athens, Greece, it's not something that we want. We want we wouldn't want to give power to only free male citizens, would we? Uh, so, uh, socialism socialism also has the right to vote. If not having the right to vote is democracy, <coughs> socialism is democracy, like Scandinavia, Scandinavian countries. Yeah, but not but the, so socialism tries to uh, motivate people into agreeing into equality, but equality is not something a lot of people would want as it, things would stay the same and there would be no improvement. Um, it, when we have wealth inequality, which is a democratic ideal, answering the issue we are at here today, um, we want to drive competition. We want to be better. Yeah. Um socialism we are saying we should have the same basic rights for example each person should have this uh, education everyone should have like you know food everyone should have a place shelter everyone should have everyone should have anything they need to live we're not saying socialism okay uh, okay well if, if looking at my first contention i talked about how we do meet i mean our government spends billions of dollars to provide education from grade school, from kindergarten to 12th grade high school. Um, and we also, not only that, but we also have a lot, uh, again, on my second contention, I talked about the different services that our government provides. And if we even go back to my rebuttal, my rebuttal talked about how even Americans making $30,000 a year are in the top 1% worldwide. So, <clears throat> I mean, even the poorest of Americans are still up there in the one, in the top one percent. It's not as the there's anyone uh, left out or there's someone that's just being um, discriminated against, as you guys mentioned in the in your first speech. There hasn't been any discrimination. Our citizens are still well off. They are still able to buy luxuries and um, um, meet their basic needs. Yeah, here's the thing. This is about America. Okay. Right. We're talking about general democracy. I, I, and I understand, yeah, I, I'm addressing all, I mean, I did address all of the points when it comes to our government. Yeah. And We're saying, like, when you have the same basic rights, like basic everything, you have, I have the same basic everything, this other person has the same basic everything, and this other person comes from a really rich family, and I don't, but I still have the same basic everything, so I can, I can improve myself as much as the other person can. We can both go to the same level in community. You know? We do have the same rights. Uh, we have the Bill of Rights, and the Bill of Rights apply to everyone equally. And when it comes to, I mean, I'm not saying that, I don't understand what you think that I'm trying to imply. However, what I, I, I will try to rephrase is that um, we have democratic ideals and we think that having people happy is what drives success. But well, the, only, the only way to have people happy and to aspire for more is through capitalism. And capitalism is indeed a democratic ideal. Like, I'm just simply answering uh, an issue that was given to me for this debate today. Our, I agree that uh, our, our debate is about democracy, not capitalism. You get and And well, the part where everyone has the basic rights in America, like people in America don't have the same <laughs> rights as black people or the... Latino. Latinos and they don't have the same rights. Like all, don't all of them don't get the right to educate. Yeah, we do. We all have equal access to free education. As we do, but but you don't actually educate. Are you, uh, are you trying to say that I'm not actually educated? No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying anything like that, okay? Okay. I'm sorry if I actually gave you that idea. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hi. Uh, but we're not just saying that um, Hispanic people and, and other people don't have the same benefits. <coughs> other people think that um, they have less of the right to do something that, like, white people. Well, when it comes to uh, 
like in schools, like for example, we have a district competition coming up and I compete with uh, people of other races. I compete against African Americans. I compete against other Latino students like me and I compete against uh, uh, white students. So I would say that, uh, I mean, either the education, free education is available to everyone and it does meet uh, your definition of equality as everyone should have the same basic needs. Um, they do have the basic needs, but they don't have the same basic opportunities. Democracy is having the same opportunities. <laughs> well, not everyone can stay after the same opportunities because not everyone is the same. Not, every, not everyone can have, like, for example, someone may be really good at math. I'm not really that good at math, I'll be honest. But um, <laughs> we, that doesn't mean that we have to have the same opportunities. That is what democracy is about. We're supposed to make our own choices. That is why we have the one person, one system. U.S. illiteracy rate is 14 percent. Uh, the U.S. illiteracy uh, rate is 14 percent. And that's a, a really big everyone. number. That's um, all I think. <laughs> it is a big number, but again, following the arguments that you made regarding the elections, uh, you you mostly focused on an argument on how the rich have more power and more influence on the election. Sure, they, I mean, when it comes down to who we elect, there's wealthy leaders all around the world. It is the wealthy yeah. ones that are at the top of the ground. Well, people who are in the U.S. have a lot, I mean, have a lot more rich, have a lot more wealth than the middle class average in America. However, when, when it comes down to uh, the average person in the U.S., we're still top 1% in the world. Yeah. We're not but the thing off. We're not trying to let our citizens be left down the curve. We are actually including them. They're active participants in our society. That is why their vote matters. That is why every single vote matters. Okay, so you mentioned the right to, I mean, each person has the same right to vote a couple of times. So I'm saying that you guys have the electoral vote things, that, um, <coughs> that not everybody has the same, I mean, have the same, has the same, um, Okay, so it, it doesn't have, I mean, each person doesn't have the same um, percentage of, of, you know, of voting. So, what about that? It, it, it does, I mean, just, you go to the ballots and you make your vote, you put it in, you count it regarding when the ballots are counted, and then we decide based on majority. I mean, we are following the democratic ideal that it gives power to the majority if that's what you're implying. Because again, I, I, I've noticed that a lot of you guys are focusing on arguing democracy. We're not arguing democracy, we're arguing the democratic ideals. Uh, well, we're, democracy, we democracy is not necessarily, it's not something that's really something that we would want in today's, uh, in today's society. Democracy, we go back to what democracy originally was. It, again, it only granted power to male citizens. No, well, yeah, I guess that's so we, okay. we're, we're arguing democratic ideals because democracy is something that we wouldn't want today. today. Democracy has changed over time. It has grown into modern democracy, and we're arguing that. Yeah, but so, even, even throughout the time, even as we have proceeded throughout time, again, we're not a direct democracy, we're a republic. And even then, we have seen improvement, and we've seen that wealth inequality, indeed, is actually helping democracies uh, grow and be successful. So that asks okay. issue today a question. So I take it that you would be are, uh, you would be agreeing with me, correct? I mean, one of your co councils are uh, agreed that wealth inequality was indeed good. Yes, yes, I agree. But okay, so um, so if there is a really poor country <coughs> and they were really democratic country, so what would the um, so what would the, be the democratic problem? Would you? Uh, would you? Um, there, I don't. I don't see a democratic problem. I mean, the democratic ideals are being followed. We have we have our basic rights. We have all of our basic needs met. And again, as I mentioned in my rebuttal, even the lowest of Americans are still at top one percent in the world. Well, the, okay, yeah, but what about the poor countries? So that poor country follows democratic ideals. So what should they do? Should they like? And the poverty well, or? Okay, your, one of your co counsels said that we're only arguing about America here today. I don't know which one was it. One of you guys mentioned they were like, 
we're not focusing on the rest of the world. We're focusing no, we're not America. talking only about America. We're just talking about everything, you know? We're talking about the world. <laughs> well, again, going back to my previous argument, there's rich leaders all around the world. So do you have any knowledge about other inequal countries of the world? I mean, I mean you, you can't. You can't, you can't force democracy onto anyone. It's their choice. It's just the way it is. Uh, again, democracy is supposed to be based on majority votes. It's just the way people most likely feel appealed to. So it's not like we're enforcing democracy into them. It's just their choice. Uh, and again, when it comes down to their choice, it's the same thing when making their vote. Again, you can be endorsed by a bunch of celebrities, and you can also have someone that's been having a lot of support and it still wouldn't make a difference. Oh. Okay. Hi. Uh, so, uh, till now we were like talking about a country, but I think that it's democracy is a global thing. And when you think about it, democracy isn't happening in the world because some countries are richer and some are poor. And while there isn't uh, equality in wealth, I think absolutely quality, but at least a basic, then how can you say that there's democracy in the world, not only a country? Uh, again, you agreed with me by saying that wealth and equality is good for democracy, so that's all I would have to say. What happened? difficulties. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry that you were like And I was saying that, like, uh, we're talking about wealth in some countries, like Arabic countries, they have uh, oil and they have they're wealthy, but. But there is actually no democracy in them. <coughs> what, um, I know there is no democracy. We have a republic. We're not a direct democracy. I've mentioned that previously. We're talking about, uh, like, Saudi Arabia. Oh, why they don't have a democracy? Uh, I, I don't know why they don't have a democracy. I know why we don't have a democracy. is because we're not a direct democracy. We're a republic. But I, I can't talk about... I wouldn't be able to infer why other countries don't have a democracy. It's just their choice. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but you're saying that you're saying that wealth hasn't like had an impact on democracy, but we have no I'm saying, I'm saying that wealth inequality has an impact in our society, in our government here in America. Because America was built off talking about America. Right. So 
That's the issue we were addressing. You can ask any of your other co-counsels, and they said that we were addressing America today. So I don't know <laughs> where, where, who is it, but one of you guys said that we weren't talking about the world, we were talking about America today, and I agreed. I was like, yes, I agree. With that is America. Isn't just about the also the world. We're not just talking about the America, but also the, the issue. The issue I received to argue today was whether or not uh, any uh, wealth inequality was detrimental to democratic ideals here in America. So when, when one of your co counsel in, in the world, democracy in the world, not just well, America. If we were to argue democracy in the world, is that the problem with that is that not every country has a democracy and not every country has democratic ideals. So it's not something yeah. that's tangible, you know? It's not something we argue. Uh, but we're also saying that a reason that some countries don't have democracy is both. We're talking about the world, so when you say that... I did not, I, I, I've never said anything about other countries. Why? Because I don't know. I wouldn't be able to tell you why other countries don't have democracy. It's not up to me. I, it's not like I have an, uh, it's not like I have a, like, straight up access to ask a government official, hey, why don't you guys have a democracy? I, I, I don't know, and I'd rather not step into that. I know why our country is not a democracy, and the fact is that we're a republic. We come from a democracy, but we're not a direct democracy. Uh, but we've been told that uh, our topic is about the world, so the research we did, and we tried to understand that why there isn't democracy in some countries, and it wasn't just about USA, because, I mean, well, it's the country. When you guys introduced your first speech, that was the issue you were addressing. No, I, I don't think so. You're right. I believe so. It's on recording. We're talking globally. I just, guys, don't, I don't want, I, don't, I hope you guys aren't taking it personally. This is not a personal belief. It's simply an issue I was required to address. Uh, it's, yeah, I know. I, I hope you guys aren't making this uh, personal. I, I was simply addressing the issue before a question today. And I, I, yeah. think I think it was a misunderstanding because uh, we, were, we were told that it was like about the world. And till now we've been talking about the USA, so I thought that bringing up the subject about the whole world is actually going yeah. to tell actually yeah. this fact that wealth has been really, really important. In it. Has yeah, added, I just, I, I still think, though, that we can't argue like worldwide because not everyone has a democracy. There's different types of government. Yeah, I think a lot of things that we wanted to discuss was that wealth is the reason to that. Like some countries are exceptions. We we can't just like forget about that. But other countries don't have democracy necessarily because wealth has had an thought, impact. Well, I thought the only issue we were addressing today was whether or not wealth inequality was detrimental to democratic ideals. So that being said, I was focusing only on countries with democratic ideals. Uh, democratic ideals is about the world. We can't just say that this country is democracy. <laughs> I'm talking about the world. So like, some countries are wealthy and the world hasn't created democracy, but has had the opposite say. I, I understand, but I mean, you can't, you can't force democracy on people. And, and as I mentioned before, not everyone has a democracy. So we can't argue democracy worldwide or why they don't have a democracy. Democratic ideals are only present when it comes to a country that's deriving from a democracy. Again, like I mentioned before, we may not be a, demo a direct democracy, but we're still part of a democracy. We're a democratic ideal, basically. We're a republic. Um, so, again, when it comes to arguing democracy around the world, not everyone has a democracy. So we can't argue that. Uh, so my friend is going to continue this. <coughs> Uh, hi, um, hi there. Uh, okay, I think uh, there has been a misunderstood um, what we mean that we're talking about the democracy in worldwide. We mean uh, we're talking about democracy in uh, different countries. So we are uh, having a th um, theoretical, uh, I guess. Um, um, meeting 
I mean, uh, talking about, uh, for example, democracy. And uh, what, uh, according to our research in the human rights framework, the state has the prom uh, primary obligation to respect, protect, and fulfill rights. But this depends on a functioning states with full democratic participation and transparency. Yet, inequality in common wealth affects formal and informal political process in ways that determine people's access to education healthcare, jobs, and social security. So what we think is that people should have an equal opportunity to claim their rights and human rights principles apply to all uh, persons equal. So what we think is... I don't know who I, I like mentioned it before because they brought up the same exact point. And again, I, I mentioned it before. We cannot have the same opportunities because not everyone is the same. Uh, equality is not something that can be accessed based on your definition. It's just, it's a logical fallacy of circular reasoning. We would never reach it. Um, again, you, you may be good at something that I'm not, uh, and we wouldn't have the same opportunities. Here in America, it's the same exact thing. Someone would believe me really good at sports. I, I'm not really sporty, but uh, I, that we wouldn't have the same opportunities. It's just, it can't be. How are we doing? Yeah, how are we? You see, um, we are different, but uh, the government should have the same opportunities for everyone. For example, everyone should have education, everyone should... Uh, for example, you know, if the people wouldn't have uh, the same equalities, there would be populism. So there would be a problem in, I don't know, for example... <laughs> understand that you're saying... Um, I'm just basing it off the definition you gave me, and following that definition, and as I mentioned before, it goes into socialism. The government shouldn't have the burden of giving everyone the same opportunity. However, like for example, here in America, we have several programs that allow people to have uh, maybe more opportunities that adapt to their personal needs, and I think that's better because what someone may need may not necessarily be what I need. Does that answer your question? It, it may not, it, it, like, when it comes to equal opportunity, I wouldn't be very happy with it because some of the things that some person may need may not be what I necessarily need. And it may not allow me to drive forward and to have other opportunities. It may only allow me to have one door open. Well, if we had the opportunity granted to me that I needed, I could have like 10 doors open. Yeah that everyone should have the minimum equality you know the minimum things that everyone needs for example education health and something like that but it depends to a person how to uh, rise it and how to um, how to maybe lose it you so we will have uh, how to uh, use it in a good way uh, so um, I think that we have we should have the minimum uh, things the government should have minimum things that a government needs and the person the people will decide how to use that um, opportunities that the government give to them in democracy and um, so it will be inequality after these same opportunities that uh, governments uh, led people to have. There should be a basic um, things that people should have and after that it depends on the person how to rise it and how to how to rise itself and how to uh, use the uh, opportunities great. So my friends is going to continue, excuse me, well, answering your previous statement as you're sitting down, sorry. Uh, I'd like to point out that if we were, if we were to uh, get grant the same, if we were like a standard for equality, that would be against democratic ideals. Why? Because again, democ democratic ideals were based off of rule by majority, not necessarily equality. Uh, well, actually, everyone needs a basic of equality. For example, if you take the uh, pyramid of essential needs, for example, you can see that first, at the beginning, first, the people need to have money, to have food, to have shelter, to have resources, and security too, the, secu uh, the security of jobs, so that they can think of democracy, so they have the money to purchase media, so they can have some information about democracy, and to... Just do something to reach democracy. I feel like there's a big misconception uh, over the thin line between opportunities and outcomes. I feel like uh, we are focusing instead on uh, what uh, what the government should grant us, and I, I think 
feel like I addressed that throughout my two contentions when I mentioned the different uh, the different programs that we have, uh, and I feel like uh, looking back as how you mentioned Japan and Canada and other democracies, if we look at them as you want, um, they all show happiness. And if they show happiness, I feel it's because they are um, they are granted the opportunities they need. They're not granted necessarily because not we're giving we're giving away a lot of opportunities and people choose which ones they take and which ones they don't take and i i feel like that's has a way better outcome than if we were just to give everyone the same thing that, that's part of the democratic ideal the democratic ideal was to give people what they needed that's why we we're going with majority rule because we thought that majority was going to decide what was better for the majority indeed. But you know what? Wealth gives the rich people a, a power, a huge power, to just um, to get into political stuff and have them have more power of vote and decision making. And that poor people don't have. They made the majority, and democracy is all about majority of people, which are not the rich people in the country. Rich people are just a minor minority of a country. The, the way I would answer to that would be that well, that's the that's the way it is all around the world. Even in places that don't have democracy, in places that they don't have democracy, it's still wealthy people at the top. You see, if it's not it's not dem, it's not detrimental to democratic ideals. I'm just, I hope you, I hope you guys understand that uh, I'm focusing on the issue that we are trying to resolve today. And the way that I resolved it was that no, uh, wealth and equality was not detrimental to democratic ideal. I, I hope that you guys know that that's the issue I am addressing. And I hope that you guys know that I'm not trying to argue democracy, I'm trying to argue democratic ideals. They're two different things. <laughs> But democracy are ideals are so uh, have so many different stuff. We're talking about inequality and democracy ideals. Right, and and, it, and I hope you guys understand that democratic ideals are not the same thing as democracy. And when it comes to inequality, inequality is indeed a democratic ideal. So you can't harm something when it's part of something else. <laughs> Um, so I think um, what you did was you studied ideal democratic uh, countries and then um, compared it with their um, um, their wealth their uh, inequality in their wealth. But I think uh, that topic like this, we need to study it in two ways. Um, first, the way that you studied, and the other way is that we study the countries that have unequal, in, unequality in wealth, and then through that, we get that, do they have democracy or not? Right. Is it that the re is the inequality the reason that they don't have democracy? I think you did not study this part of it. I'm not sure, but no, I did not. Things that you said. I only I focus think when on the first I'm sorry. Can you I only focus on the first issue. And the first issue was whether or not wealth inequality was detrimental to democratic ideals. That was the only topic I was given, and that was the one I prepared for. Uh, no, I think the topic that we were mutually given was uh, democracy and equality and wealth, but it did not focus in one of them only. So, um, what I thought was that, uh, uh, what I thought was um, when I studied, I saw that some countries, I studied it both ways, but from one perspective, you see that in some countries that we have inequality in wealth, uh, this is separate from the thing that you study. Um, in that in the countries that have inequality, uh, inequality in wealth, uh, it is really hard for them to con uh, to keep and support their democracy. So, uh, as we see in SAS, um, Saudi Arabia, and uh, countries that are rich for their oil. 
um, they don't, uh, they have the right to vote, but we see in those countries that women have less right, uh, they, they have um, limits, they have limits in their life, uh, fundamental, uh, and fundamental, fundamental things that we all agree all people should have. Um, uh, based on the um, definition that we gave at the first, um, yeah, in the uh, first part of the conference. Uh, and also, uh, sorry, I didn't catch your name. What's your name? Uh, Frisa. Nice to meet you, Frisa Rodriguez. Uh, sorry, Teresa? Brisa. B R I S S A. Brisa. It's really. Where's the issue? It's, I understand. <laughs> a lot of people. Are yeah, uh, it's uh, really. You're very okay. It was really good to meet you. And we're kind of out of time. And I apologize if you had to, like, you seem to have cats or cut cold. No, uh, um, and that's just the issue I prepared. Um, kind, kind of like do the issues through. So I, I was thinking, I, I didn't know it was like an open discussion kind of thing, uh, but it was a pleasure to meet you girls and uh, wish, you. we would have had more time to address any of your questions if you guys had any. I would be glad to continue this discussion. Or election or, or anything like that and it was a huge opportunity so thank you guys for granting us the opportunity to participate in this. It was really nice to uh, have this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye